Central Park, New York City, in the center of the Isle of Manhattan. I'm new to New York, so I wanted to learn more about America's most famous park. Central Park was the first landscaped public park in United States history, and a regular terrain of swamps and bluffs punctuated by rocky outcroppings made the land between 5th and 8th Avenues and 59th and 106th Streets undesirable for private development, and in turn, a park was built. The park opened for public use in the winter of 1859. The real estate value of Central Park was estimated by property appraisal firm Miller Samuel to be $528,783,552,000 in December 2005. That's a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Anyway, I'm looking for some of the more interesting things lurking in the park. Fun, old, new, weird, exciting, active. The park's got it all. There's boating. Rowboating, to be exact. Yes, you know, but have you ever been? It's very nice. Even romantic, if you so desire. Look at that guy! He's in a gondola. Wow. There are lovely carriage rides. Pretty basic, but also fun. A nice way to see the park, for sure. It's become controversial to have the horses on the busy streets, so this is one tradition that may not last. And lots of sports. Just look at these people go. Bikers, runners, skaters, you name it. The New York City Marathon even finishes here. Go, go faster, guys! There's even rock climbing. Well, sort of. But check it out, this is Rat Rock, one of the more popular climbing spots in the park. It's named after the rats that used to swarm there at night. But look, I made it up to the top! Yay! How about the Central Park Carousel? This is one of the largest merry-go-rounds in the United States. It was handcuffed in 1908 and was originally installed in Coney Island. Then there's the Swedish Cottage Marionette Theater. This model schoolhouse was built in Sweden of native pine and cedar, then disassembled and rebuilt in the US as Sweden's exhibit for the 1876 Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. Frederick Law Olmsted moved the cottage here in 1877. And look, there's even the Central Park Zoo. Look at these penguins go, they, they were fun. And a polar bear, an indoor rainforest, check, with all kinds of birds. Look at this guy, he's... He's kind of cool. And there's even bats! Check this out, Cleopatra's Needle. That's right, this is straight out of Egypt. It's a red granite obelisk. It was sculpted around 1450 BCE by Pharaoh Thutmose III. The hieroglyphics were inscribed about 200 years later by Pharaoh Ramses II to glorify his military victories. The obelisk arrived in New York in July of 1880. And while we're on it, there are all these other statues in the park as well. Christopher Columbus, Explorer. Thomas More, Irish poet. Walter Scott, novelist. Hans Christian Andersen, storyteller. Fitzgreen Halleck, American poet. Alice, the one who went to Wonderland. William Shakespeare, playwright. Robert Burns, poet and songwriter of Old Lang Syne. Volto, a sled dog. Beethoven, composer. Okay, you get it, there's a lot of statues. Oh, and here's a little trick I learned. If you're ever lost in the park, all the cast iron lampposts have a four-digit number corresponding to the cross street you would be on if that street extended through the park. So the first two digits here are five and nine. We're on 59th Street. Easy. I could go on and on. 26,000 trees, 9,000 benches, 36 bridges, 21 playgrounds, 275 types of birds, 125 drinking fountains, 7 ornamental fountains, 843 acres, and 250 million visitors a year, including me. Design, build, and run the city of your dreams. Sim City 4. Ready to eat for everyone. EA Games. Challenge everything.
Sunlight is made up of tiny packets of energy called photons. Every minute, enough of this energy reaches the Earth to meet the world's energy demand for a whole year. Photovoltaic panels consist of many solar cells. These are made of materials like silicon, one of the most common elements on Earth. The individual cell is designed with a positive and a negative layer to create an electric field, just like in a battery. As photons are absorbed in the cell, their energy causes electrons to become free. The electrons move toward the bottom of the cell and exit through the connecting wire. This flow of electrons is what we call electricity. By combining solar cells and photovoltaic panels, we can produce just the right amount of electricity to perform a specific job, no matter how large or small. I've been looking over your green proposal. Great. It's fine, just fine. I'm sure it'll make people feel real good about the company. You should go over big with the tree huggers, too. See, the folks that I report to, they don't eat granola. So let me ask you, why would I sign this? This plan could cut our energy costs by 40%. 40%. And we spent $18 million on energy last year. Go ahead, son. Just sign it. 